And freedom of speech and freedom of thought are two of the things that are very much under attack from the government system. And I'm expecting to see quite a bit of chaos. Things really look like they're ramping up. The political situation certainly hasn't improved. There's far more theatre coming down the pike for everybody. Talk of impeachment of Trump and all sorts of stuff. I mean, I really doubt that will happen. But we're certainly seeing a lot of chaos anyway. Australia really is one of the most corrupt and controlled places on earth, folks. It's a beautiful country, Australia, were it not for the government and the police, who are some of the most brutal on earth and some of the most profoundly stupid on earth. And of course, a combination of ignorance and power is a very dangerous combination for anybody to have. And really, as far as Western standards go and the Western world goes, Australia really is leading the way as far as police states and government corruption. We just get away with all sorts of things here, folks. People get pulled over by the police and subject to drug tests and breath tests and checked up on all the time just to make sure they're not stepping outside the lines. Even though they haven't committed any crime, they're not under any suspicion at all, but the police will just pull you up and harass you just to check to see if there's any way they can extort some income from you. And the government gets away with all sorts of stuff like this, and it just goes beyond what anyone will believe is possible. You know, they're imprisoning children, even though we know they're being abused in detention centres in Villawood and out on Nauru. We put refugees out on the islands in Nauru. Innocent people trying to escape tyranny, we just put them in prison. Because, of course, we don't have any room for refugees here. We've got a country that is twice the size of Europe with 26 million people in the country, so we can't fit any more people in here unless they are migrants that are being brought in to undermine the social structure of Australian culture. We can always fit those people in, but anybody who is really, truly needy, who is a real refugee and suffering a state of real hardship, well, we just throw them out onto an island in Nauru. There's no point putting these people here because they can't really serve the government agenda in any way, so we may as well just forget about them out of Side, out of mind and don't let the media report it to anybody and just treat them like non-humans because that's the Australian government way. Well, it's certainly Peter Dutton's way anyway. Peter Dutton is a textbook sociopath, folks, absolute psychopath with absolute disregard for the well-being of anybody but himself, apart from, of course, the corrupt banksters he so willingly supports, as all politicians do. These days, it's just the way of the world. But that's Australia, folks. It's an incredibly corrupt place. You know, as I said, incarcerating children, they disarmed the people, so we can't do anything about it. With the false flag shooting that the government staged at Port Arthur many years ago, it was the worst massacre in the world at the time. And of course it was staged by government. It's every evidence that it was staged by government. There's the phone conversations that were heard during the event, which clearly showed that there was police in the house with Martin Bryan. It was the police who were doing the shooting. There was the fact that the Tasmanian government bought a mobile morgue just a couple of months before the event and then sold it after the event. There's also the little detail that the gun that was used for the event was actually confiscated by Victorian police a year before the event, so one might question how it ever got to Tasmania into the hands of Martin Bryant. There's also the fact that the police were called to the other side of the island on a wild goose chase and the event didn't take place until the police rang up and informed their superiors that they were on a wild goose chase and when their superiors knew that all the police were on the other side of the island then the shooting was staged. The fact that there's video footage of a Channel 7 helicopter there while the shooter is walking out of the cafe where the shooting occurred. Not to mention the fact that whoever did the shooting must have been one of the world's best shooters because even an Olympic shooter has stated that he would be very hard pushed to achieve that amount of accuracy in that amount of time. And just consider for a moment just how good this shooter really was, folks. All head and neck shots and all shot from the hip by a man who'd never had any firearms training. And in less than 30 minutes at six separate crime scenes, 35 people were shot dead, another 22 were wounded, and two cars were stopped using only a total of 64 bullets. On one occasion when he went for a car, there was a car that was driving down the road towards him, he'd fired one sighting shot into the car, then a second to disable the driver, and then a third shot directly into the motor block to disable the vehicle. This is a known military combat technique for disabling vehicles. Very few people know of this technique, and only a handful of experts can master it with only three bullets, and this awesome display of combat marksmanship was blamed on an intellectually impaired young man who had no shooting or military experience at all. Think about it, folks. You know, when you look at it, there is absolutely no doubt in looking at any of the evidence, in fact, all the evidence 
strongly says and tells you with no uncertain scientific terms that Martin Bryant killed no one at Port Arthur. This crime was committed by the Australian government in order to disarm the people. End of story. A very telling point, of course, the fact that the accused Martin Bryant never went to trial and of course he never went to trial because if he had gone to trial, the evidence would have shown that he wasn't guilty because all the evidence suggests he was completely innocent of the affair. And that was used to disarm the Australian people. Little Johnny Howard did that one. Maggot Magoo, we like to lovingly call that man. One of the most corrupt politicians in the world. But again, that's just the Australian government way and they're continuing to do everything they can, folks. They're ramping up the debt slavery. And did you know that the Australian government is still supplying massive amounts of weapons and logistic support to the Indonesians in their genocide of West Papua as well. This is something that never makes the news and something that the Australian government has its fingers in very, very deeply. All the companies just love profiting from the destruction of people and the abuse of life. That's what the Australian government seems to be based on. After all, Australia was created as a prison colony to begin with, and the prison guards who run the place have never really lost that mentality, and they've just got more and more brutal as the years go on, and they've done their best to make sure that there's absolutely no way the people of Australia can ever stand back or stand up for themselves. You know, you're not even allowed to defend yourself in Australia. If someone hits you, you should call the police. If you hit them back, you may hurt them and they may charge you. I mean, it's ridiculous, folks. I think we should ignore that, and I think if anyone does attack you, you should defend yourself by whatever means possible, and screw the police and screw the government. It doesn't really matter what they say. They're the criminals who create all the problems to begin with. They're the ones who put everybody in a state of scarcity so that crime is committed to begin with. In fact, all of the problems and all the crime we see on the earth today exists because it's legislated by governments to exist. That's what governments are for. They're just there to mess everybody else up, folks. That's the purpose of government. They're certainly not there to provide any good for people. It's just a case of racketeering, and the media propaganda which supports it and trains the people to go along with it, of course, due to this corrupt education system. And I'll tell you, folks, if you really want to see freedom in the world and you really want to make some change to the world, the best thing you could ever do is pull your children out of the government-run education system and set up your own people's education system so you can teach your children about reality rather than them being trained to support the government slavery system. That would be the best thing everybody could do. That's where we really went wrong, folks, is when this corrupt cacastrocracy of psychotic parasites managed to gain control of the education system and basically teach bullshit to the children and teach them to be subservient little drones that always do what the government says. That is the biggest problem we face, and that is really how these psychopathic parasites were able to get control and gain control of people's minds so effectively. You know, the television and the newspapers and even social media to a degree now, I mean, social media promotes a very superficial reality to people, but control of the newspapers and the television, of course, propagates this corrupt system and feeds people the information the government wants them to have. But the thing is, they wouldn't ever even believe this. I mean, they wouldn't seriously allow themselves to be subject to the rubbish that they're fed by the controlled media were it not for the fact that they've all been cleverly indoctrinated through this corrupt education system to begin with. You know, the education system has trained them to always respect authority and to always believe the television is telling them the truth when nothing could be, in fact, further from the real truth. <laughs> 